Hey everyone, Michael Beresford here from OpenCorp for today's Property Wealth Wad. Uh, great to have you along. Some of the, uh, the things that we'll be, uh, we'll be talking about this morning are all about questions that we commonly get asked by both um, uh, initial you know, people starting out for the first time and for those that have, uh, have been around a while and, and are seasoned investors. Now, the thing that we'll be talking about today really relates to borrowing capacity. So as we've talked about, those that have been to our workshops, borrowing capacity is the key and understanding that first and foremost is the first step that any potential investor should undertake to understand what's possible from a finance perspective. Slightly different tone on today though is around borrowing capacity for your own home and specifically the impact that that has on you being able to continue to build your investment portfolio. Okay, now there'll always be slight variations in this stuff, guys, depending on income, existing portfolio, and so on. So, this is more generic um, guidance for you. But the way that the banks typically work out borrowing capacity, okay, uh, is on a ratio of about four to one. So, what I mean by that is if your borrowing capacity is 500,000 for your own home, then multiply that by four and that would give you a borrowing capacity for investment of about $2 million, okay? Now, the reason for that, very simply, is if we think about your owner-occupied home, what source of money have you got to be able to repay that mortgage? Well, everything, sorry for the reality check, all of you homeowners out there, myself included, um, every single cent to pay that mortgage comes out of your salary post-tax. Okay, so Scott Morrison and Malcolm Turnbull take their slice, they leave you with the rest and you're using just that source of money to pay the mortgage. So there's a much greater uh, cash flow requirement out of pocket to fund your own home. If we come over here and look at the investment side of things, then we've actually got the vast majority of the holding costs 90 to 95% paid for by other people, being the tenant and the government through the tax benefits. So banks build in their buffers and all those kind of things, but at the end of the day, you need a lot less money out of your pocket to hold an investment than what you do your own occupied home. So as a result, the borrowing capacity will be in a ratio of about four to one. 